uh, in the architecture. Uh, the architect of the uh, of, of both of these buildings is the same, which of course helps to explain the reason why it was able to be blended in so so easily. Uh, they're also the architects of the William Bridge, uh, Williamsburg Savings Bank in Brooklyn, uh, which also has a clock tower. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, from the middle of the 20th century or further back than that. But what is now the Ortiz Funeral Home used to be a Robert Hall clothing store. Um, which, it, yeah. <laughs> I got a jacket there. Okay, so there you are. <laughs> what was the jingle? Uh, Robert Hall this season will show you the reason low overhead, low overhead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but now, of course, uh, this is uh, this is where people, you know, say goodbye. Uh, the um, there is a mural on the side. Uh, now, in the uh, 1960s, 70s, 80s, there was a riot of um, of uh, uh, graffiti artists uh, who, who it was uh, you know vandalism well uh, the thing is that there were people who are professional artists who took a look at this and said you know despite the fact that it's vandalism these people many of these people have talent they have artistic talent and they work to uh, to give them uh, some sort of direction to put them into a much more positive mode and uh, a number of those graffiti artists became muralists and they do this for money uh, so this fellow Tracy, uh, who has done some murals uh, around the Bronx, uh, was commissioned by the Ortiz Funeral Home uh, to make this uh, very nice uh, uh, mural over here in the uh, graffiti style. Um, and it sort of, uh, you know, gives a nice, uh, pleasant, uh, pleasant atmosphere uh, to it all. Uh, there are others uh, down in Hunts Point. There's a group of them that got together into a, uh, a consortium called Tats Crew, and uh, they uh, get contracts from all over the place to uh, paint the sides of buildings uh, uh, for uh, for people who own them. So. Uh, added some graffiti to this picture. <laughs> Bridge, there's like a tunnel, and it looks yeah. like on the wall of the tunnel, he's graffitied it. <laughs> it's possible, yeah. <laughs> All right, now we're going to go into the park, okay? Okay. Well, it is warm in the sun, isn't it? So we'll get into the shade. We are in um, what is called Poe Park, uh, and you'll see why if you don't know already. Um, but one of the features of Poe Park, this area of Poe Park, is this uh, bandstand uh, that is uh, right behind me. It was uh, uh, put up here in the, uh, uh, in the early years of the park itself. Uh, the park itself is about 102 years old. Uh, and uh, there were concerts here, regular concerts uh, that were held. Uh, in the 1920s and 30s every Wednesday night uh, in the warm weather. Uh, there would be uh, big bands that were here. Uh, Jimmy Dorsey played here, Benny Goodman played here, um, and several others. Uh, nowadays, uh, you have uh, smaller groups, mostly Latin bands, again, because of the demogra current demographics of the area, but also other groups that, uh, that do play here. At one point, when uh, the Jimmy Dorsey band was here, uh, he had a, uh, uh, two sisters uh, who were singers that he hired 
for the very first time, and for the very first time professionally, uh, they sang here. Um, and of course, since he was basically trying them out, seeing how the audience was it, you know, he wasn't going to uh, take them into uh, the more expensive nightclubs where he usually played. Uh, but they sang here, and uh, they were a hit. And they uh, they you know went on from there. One you know eventually the sister act uh, broke up, and one of them uh, went on uh, uh, still further. Uh, the sister act was called the Clooney Sisters, and the one that went on was Rosemary Clooney. So this is where Rosemary Clooney got her very first professional uh, gig, if you will. Okay, bet you didn't know that. <laughs> All right. uh, now I just want to show you, in you know, braving the uh, the hot sun, uh, you know, something that over here, uh, one of those Art Deco apartment houses uh, that were built. Uh, this is Kingsbridge Road over here. Kingsbridge Road is one of the oldest roads uh, in the Bronx. It started out as an Indian trail, and uh, later became, in the colonial period, a cattle trail. Uh, people who uh, had cattle uh, would take. Uh, their cattle to New York City on the hoof uh, over the King's Bridge. So this led to the King's Bridge. That's why this is the King's Bridge Road. Now, if you can imagine those people with their tricorn hats and their short pants uh, striding horses saying, get a long little doggy, you're pretty good. Uh, but this, uh, now, uh, in uh, 1912, 19, uh, 1812, 1813 or so, uh, this was the farm of John Valentine. And uh, he had erected um, a number of small wooden cottages for his farmhands to live in. And they were all over the side of the hill, one of which was directly across the street, just about where the, uh, that Art Deco building bends. Uh, you notice that there is a, uh, uh, a street light uh, right in front of it. And on the sidewalk, a little further up, there is a fire hydrant. Well, one of those uh, one of those small cottages was located over there. And in 1846, uh, there was a, a poor guy whose wife was dying of tuberculosis, uh, who was trying to save his wife uh, in the last desperate attempt to come to the fresh air of what was then called the village of Fordham. And he rented the house for $100 a year. Uh, and uh, he lived there. Uh, his name was uh, Poe, uh, Edgar Allan Poe. I don't know if you've heard of him. Um, but uh, that is exactly where the cottage was. And it faced south. Uh, the side was over here. There are uh, photographs that show the cottage on its original site. And um, those photographs show a, uh, a gas lamp where the current electric light is and an old, uh, uh, larger, uh, fatter uh, fire hydrant where the current fire hydrant is. And it gives you an exact location of where the original Poe Cottage was. Uh, this area at the time was an apple orchard. Now, when those houses immediately to the north uh, were being erected, in the um, uh, in the early 20th century, uh, it just abutted the cottage itself, and the cottage itself was in danger from falling bricks and things like that because of the construction. Uh, there was a big protest, and what happened was that the city of New York purchased this to make it a park to move the cottage over, and the cottage was placed in the northern part of the park, facing in the same direction as it was originally. And we're going to get to that cottage shortly. But let's walk on the way through the park, and uh, we'll see uh, you know, some of the things that are here now. It's completely by the foliage of the trees that are there. Uh, is a frame building um, that uh, was put here, you know, in the early uh, early part of the 20th century as a private house, but in the 1920s it was purchased by the Knights of Columbus, and that became the Knights of Columbus Hall. Uh, 
And that building uh, was used uh, not only for meetings of the Knights of Columbus, but also uh, for any functions that would put on uh, the Catholic Youth Organization, for instance, might have a dance uh, over there, or there might be dinners over there, receptions, uh, things like that. Uh, that uh, was used by the Knights of Columbus up until uh, the, uh, the 1980s, and um, they then sold it to the people who have it now. It's 